Can we just look at your neighbor? Someone beside you, just look at him or her. And just tell him, welcome at Life Church. Amen. Thank you. I want to thank God for the opportunity of being here, standing in front of you today to come and share with you the Word of God. It's not easy. It's been a while. It's been a while, but the Lord is good, and I praise Him and thank the Holy Spirit for this service today. Again, for those who are new, my name is Nuru Simtenda, and I'm married to a beautiful wife, Witness Simtenda. She is right there, a worshiper. We're both from Tanzania, and concerning ministry, I'm an ordained minister of the gospel. I went for Bible school for three years and obtained my bachelor degree in theology and honors in ministry. And I served as assistant pastor and youth pastor in South Africa for about two years. And so I praise God for that opportunity. And now I'm a student at Lemoyne College, and I'm doing business uh, finance and risk management and insurance. And by God's grace, in May, I will be graduating. So I really praise the Lord. Amen. It's been a long journey, but God has been good. And I praise the Lord for wonderful family, Life Church, that uh, He has allowed me to be part of this family. Amen. By saying that, let's go straight to the Word of God today. Today we're going to look into the book of Jonah. We will focus on chapter 3. And I want to talk uh, the message concerning obedience and specific the benefits of obedience. Shall we open our Bible from the book of Jonah, chapter 3? Jonah chapter 3, and we'll read from verse 1. The Bible says, Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, Forty more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When Jonah's warning reached to the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. This is the proclamation he issued in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or flocks, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink. But let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows, God may relent. And with compassion turn from his fierce anger, so that, we will not perish. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for the reading of your word. Lord, I pray that your spirit will lead us and guide us. May you use me as your vessel today. May you use me to deliver that which you have for your people in this morning. May you alone be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we just clap our hands again and praise the Lord as we continue with the message of today. As I said, I, wanna, I will focus on the benefits of obedience in this chapter and the verses that we have just read. But I want us to get a little bit of what happened before. And then we'll come back right and see the benefits that we can find in someone who obeys 
God's word, what will happen to others. Amen. And now, the book of Jonah, Jonah prophesied during the peaceful and prosperous time of Jeroboam II. This was the king in the northern kingdom. And so Jeroboam was a king, but was a bad king. And now Jonah received a message from the Lord to go and speak to him, that he's going to bless him, he's going to enlarge his territory, he's going to make him great. So Jonah went and prophesied to this king. And that's what happened by then, and indeed, God did as he promised. So he was a ruler in Israel, as I said, in northern kingdom. Now this time, the Assyrian was not a threat to Israel. This time when Jonah uh, prophesied. Now the main theme of this book is that uh, God's compassion is boundless. Not limited just to Jonah and the Israelite, but also available to the sailors and the Ninevites. Now, the book of Jonah has only four chapters, and it can be divided into two parts. So part one, we find Jonah, the pagan, the sailors, and the sea. So these are characters that you find in part one, which is chapter one and chapter two. So the story, I believe that you have read probably or you have heard someone preaching about the story of Jonah. Those who went to Sunday school, it's one of those uh, well-known stories that we've been taught. And so, interesting in this uh, chapter one, we find Jonah with the sailors. Jonah had received uh, a message from the Lord, a calling to go and preach and declare the word against Nineveh. But he tried to escaped. So Jonah, he attempted to escape the Lord's calling by sailing from uh, the seaport of Joppa to Tarshish. So he was turning. God sent him to west and he's trying to go to east. And now while he's trying to escape and the storm came and they couldn't continue with the journey, it was terrible. And now they were wondering what happened, what, what's going on? And they found Jonah was sleeping and they asked you, they you know, they waked him up and bring him up and ask what's going on. And they had to decide and uh, throw a lot. And the Lord, you know, found to who? To Jonah. It went direct to Jonah. And they asked, okay, what's going on? I like the question that they ask. I'm just paraphrasing this story quick and then we'll go to the message direct. And so if we go to, we read in verse, verse 8 and 9, there's questions that they asked Jonah, which caught my attention. And they say, so they ask him, that's Jonah chapter 1, verse 8 to 9. They ask him, tell us, who is responsible for making all these trouble for us? What kind of work do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? And this is what Jonah answered now. He said, I am a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. This is like an interview. You go and they ask you, hey, tell us about yourself. Tell us more. Well, what do you do? You know? And now the response was quite interesting. And Jonah replied and said, I am a Hebrew and a worship of the Lord. What do you reply when someone asks you today, who are you? Tell us about yourself. Are you able to reply that I'm a believer, I follow Jesus Christ? Or, But he replied with confidence that I'm not doing anything else, but I'm a worshiper. I worship the Lord. I worship the God who created the heaven and the earth. This was interesting and I thought of bringing to your attention. But also now they decide, then they ask, what should we do? And he said, just pick me up and throw me in the sea. And this, all this trouble will end and it's going to be calm. And they decided to throw him. But they were worrying. They were terrified because he mentioned he is a worship. And so something happened in their hearts. And they had to pray before even they throw him. They feared the Lord at that moment. And they threw him into the sea. 
And immediately afterward, Jonah went there and God provided a huge fish. God provided. It was a provision from the Lord. It's God who provided. Even when you tried to run away, but the hand of God still upon you. God is still watching you. Watch your step. And so there's a lot of argument about, you know, the story of fish and all this. But what I know, what I believe is that this was a miracle. This was a miracle from the Lord. And the Lord provided a fish. And Jonah was there for three days and three nights. And Jesus mentioned also, as a confirmation, he, he gave this as a sign to the scribes and the teachers who questioned him, who asked him, hey, can you give us a sign? And he said, there's no sign that I'll be given to you but the sign of Jonah. If we read in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 38 to 40. It say, then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. He answered, A wicked and adulterous generation ask for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly, of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And so Jesus related the story of Jonah, the event of Jonah, to himself, to what was going to happen to himself, his death and resurrection, which we are going to celebrate soon in two weeks to come. Amen. Hallelujah. And so this is kind of like interesting story how it's the only example that Jesus gave to himself concerning his death and resurrection from the Old Testament. This is the only example that you find it's direct concerning his death and resurrection. Now, moving on, part two of this book, which is chapter three and chapter four, which we are going to concentrate on chapter 3, and find the benefits of obeying God's word. Now, the word of the Lord came again to Jonah. Before that, something interesting in chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, where Jonah prayed, and verse 9, it said, But I, with shout of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will make good. I will say salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vowed Jonah unto dry land. So chapter 2, Jonah prayed. And when he reached to verse 9 at the end, he started praising the Lord. He declared who God is and what he is able to do. That salvation comes only from the Lord. And the moment he changed his mind and the way he was praying and started praising the Lord. And the Lord responded. And the Lord acted immediately and commanded the fish to vomit him. And he vomited, the fish vomited him direct to Nineveh at the place where he was supposed to go and preach. And immediately, now we come to verse 1 up to 4 of chapter 3. Now, that's when the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began going a day journey into the city proclaiming for 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. Now the word of the Lord came for the second time to Jonah. And Jonah obeyed. He obeyed the word and he went to the city he was supposed to go for three days. But he only took one day full of power, strength, energy, and proclaim the message to the Nineveh 
city and told them that, hey, in 40 days, in 40 days, Nineveh will be overthrown. That was tough message. But he was excited. If you look at the background of Jonah, at some point he didn't want. The question is why at first place he tried to escape. Why he didn't want to obey at the first place. So there's a lot that argument. Why and why. But if you read in chapter 4, you'll understand the reason why he did not want to go. Because he knew that God is a merciful God. He knew that God is a gracious God. And if we go there, he will always forgive these people. He will always, he will just let people go even if they are wicked. He will welcome them. Because he had experience in Second King. If you read, you will find the message that God gave him to preach to the king or to declare to the king. The king was a bad person. He was a wicked king. And so when God told him to go, he thought he's going to tell him, go and tell him that I'm going to destroy the nation. I'm going to finish them. But the message was, I'm going to bless them. And so he was upset. And he knew that even now, he will still forgive these people. They are wicked people. But he didn't realize the merciful that God has. He didn't realize the compassion. He didn't realize who God he is. How patient he is. So he tried to escape. And now he obeyed. He said, okay, I will go. And he declared. And he preached. He preached. He preached and preached. Amen. Now, the benefits of obeying God's word. What is obedience? Obedience means submissive compliance to the commands of one and authority. So it's submitting, is complying with what you've been told with someone who is an authority and you go and do it. And this always and sometimes it's not aligned with your values. It's not in your favor. You've been given commands that you see that, no, this is very tough. This is hard for me. I can't do it. But obedience, that's when it comes in and you decide to do it. You obey. Now, in Old Testament, obedience was a way to show faith in God and an attitude of reverence and respect to Him. That's how obedience was revealed in the Old Testament. But in New Testament, obedience is accepting and living out Jesus, His commandments in our lives. If we read in the book of John, chapter 15, Verse 14 to uh, verse 10 to 14, it says, If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. So in New Testament, the commandment that Jesus gives us is to love one another. Because in love, there is, there is, there is joy. In love, there is helping one another. In love, there is forgiveness. In love, there is allowing others to do things to benefit others. So there is more in love, and that is the commandment that Jesus gave us. And we are to obey. We are to live out the love of Jesus. We are to show the love of Jesus, regardless of our background, where we come from, who you are, color, or anything. We are to show love because we are his children. Amen. Now, the benefits of obeying God's word can be to individual a person who is obeying and can be to others. Now, if it's individuals, a person who is obeying, these are the benefits that you may uh, receive. It's a staying connected to God. It helps us when we obey God's word. It helps us to stay connected to him. 
The second, it, it helps us to practice wisdom and make us more mature in faith when we obey God's word. But also it helps us to stay on the right path and avoid dangerous and harmful situations. Just as Jonah, when he tried to disobey, when he tried to run away, he ended up being in, in the, uh, the belly of fish. He ended up staying there. I think he died. If you read carefully in verse 2, it shows that he died. And then God res- helped him. You know, he resurrected. If you read carefully when he mentioned his prayer, he went down and he died. So if you disobey what God has calling you to do, what God is telling you to do, you may end up being in trouble. You may end up suffer. You may end up in the situation that are dangerous for yourself, for your health, for anything that might come along because of disobeying. But when we obey, it helps us to stay in the right path. Now, what happened to others? What benefits others may receive through our obedience? And this is what I want you to really uh, get today. If you forget anything, but these three points I want you to remember. The first thing is that it can cause others to believe God. When you obey what God is telling you to do, it may help us, help others to believe. It will cause others to believe God. We see in Jonah chapter 3 verse 5, it says, the Ninevites believed God. Because of Jonah's obedience, the Ninevites believed God. Remember, these were the pagans, were the people who didn't know God. But because Jonah obeyed, I believe they had some conversation. They asked, hey, what's happening? What's going? What will happen? And Jonah had to explain. And they believed God. They believed God because of the obedience. If you obey today, I don't know what is that God has been calling you. I don't know what is that God is telling you to do. Either here at Life Church, maybe serving at the CAF, maybe at the Welcome Center. I don't know what type of ministry. I don't know what is that God has been speaking in your heart that you have to do. Through your obedience may cause others to believe. Your neighbor, your co-worker, in your environment. And so the Ninevite believed God. We have an example of missionaries. We have missionaries who leave their countries and go to another country and preach and share the love. They obey. It's not easy. But through their obedience, we can see how people have been transformed in their lives. How people come to Christ because of their obedience. Romans chapter 10 verse 14 to 15. It says, how then can they all, can they call on the one they have not believed? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Verse 17 is saying, consequently, faith comes by hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. So faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? The message. The Ninevite, they heard the message and they believed God. How can they believe unless someone went and speak to them and they hear the message? You expect your neighbor, you expect your children, you expect your relative, you expect someone to know God, to believe in God, but you are sitting quiet. How will they believe? They have to hear. And so you have the opportunity to share. Your work is to speak, is not to change someone. You are just an instrument. We are instruments. We are God's vessel. It's for us to just go and say, go and deliver. The work 
is from the Lord. It's God who changes people. Jonah did not change these people. But he had to obey and speak. And when they heard, they believed God. Because they heard the message. Not just the message, but the message from the Lord. Not just anything that you think, but it has to be the word of God. It has to be the message from the Lord. Then that it has got power to change someone's life. Paul say in Romans 1.16 that for I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jews, then to the Gentiles. It is the power of God. The gospel is the power of God that brings salvation. It's the gospel, and the gospel is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can we just clap our hands to Jesus and praise the Lord? The word of God is the power that brings salvation. James 2.17, it says, In the same way, faith itself if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. So faith without action, it's dead. And this leads to my second point, that these people, your obedience of the word of God, may cause others to repent. So the Nineveh, they did not end in believing, but they took action, next step from believing, and they repented. If you read verse 6 to 8. Let's read just verse 8. Verse 8, it says, But let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. And so the king, when he heard, the Bible says he sat down. In the dust, if you see the king sitting down, that it's another dimension. It's not easy. You find today, uh, you send a message to our president, Biden, and you find him sitting down humbling. Can it be happen? Yes, it can. God can. And so this is what happened to the king. He sat down in the dust and removed his robes, put aside. And cover himself with sackcloth. And ordered all the people to do the same thing. He laid by example. As a leader. And so he humbled himself. Wearing of sackcloth. It's a sign of a mass repentance. And so they humbled. They repented. They called upon the Lord. And said perhaps maybe. Maybe God may have mercy on us. And so they repented. God wants people to turn from their evil ways. If you read Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 11, it says, Say to them, as surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, people of Israel? God is asking us to turn. God wants people to turn from their evil way. He doesn't want people to die in sin. But come, repent. Repent. Repentance. I don't know what you have been doing. I don't know your situation. But today, God is calling all of us. Take action of repentance. Take action of turning from your evil ways. Selfish. Unforgiving. Gossip. All these are evil ways. Are things that God doesn't want. We are to turn. It's like you are driving somewhere and you miss your destination. What you do, you make a U-turn. And you go until you get where you want to go. You take the opposite direction. That is repentance. It's turning, leaving behind, and take new step. Praise the Lord. Give glory to God and praise God. Let's look at another example. 
in the New Testament. Acts chapter 2, verse 37 and 38. It says, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So Peter preached the message. It was the day of Pentecost. And people heard the word. They heard the message. And they asked, what shall we do now? What shall we do? And the next step is repentance. So your obedience today will cause others to repent. If you obey today, if you follow God's commandments, if you follow and do, if you do that which God is calling you to do, it may cause someone to repent, to turn from their evil ways and come close to God. And my last point is, is that if you obey, it may cause God to relent with compassion. And this we find in verse 9 and 10, where it says, Who knows God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. So through your obedience, to God's word, it may cause someone to have a second chance. There are people who are in a state of dying. They're in a state they don't know what to do. They are lost completely. But today, if you obey and go and share the word of God, we are all called to preach the gospel, to share the love of God. It's not the work of pastor alone. It's not the work of elders alone. No, it's the work of all of us to share the love of God, to share the good news. The good news is Jesus Christ. And so if we do that, it may cause others to see the mercy of God in their lives, to realize how compassionate he is our God, how gracious he is our God, Last week we heard the message of gracious, embracing the grace of God. So through obedience, we will cause others to see this grace of God, how it is through obedience. Let's look at a quick example of someone who obeyed and what happened again. Ezekiel, Isaiah chapter 38. We got a very lovely example again about obedience and what happened after. If you read in the book of Isaiah, we're about to finish now. So, you find it say from verse 1, In the same day Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, on, Isaiah son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord said, Put your house in order because you are going to die. You will not recover. That was a hard message to tell someone, especially he's the king. You go to the president today and tell him that, hey, you are going to die. You will not recover. That wasn't an easy message. But the prophet had to obey and went and speak direct. He went and speak. Now the Bible says King Ezekiah turned around, if you continue to read, and he prayed. He asked for God to intervene in the situation. He reminded God how faithful he was, how, what he did. And then what happened next is that then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah a second time after the king prayed. And say, go, that verse 4 to 5, it say, go and tell Hezekiah, this is what the Lord, the God of your father David said, I have heard your prayer. And see and seen your tears, I will add 15 years to your life. 
and I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city. So the obedience of Isaiah led to God, God to act differently. He went and speak, and the man, the king, had to humble himself and call upon the Lord. And the Lord heard his prayer, just as it was to the Ninevites when they believed and they turned around. And so he prayed, and the Lord sent again Isaiah, go and tell him that I've heard his prayer. And I will add 15 more years for him to live. But not only that, but I will defend the country. He must not worry. I will defend. Your obedience may cause others to see the grace of God. How gracious our God he is. And the last example that I want to bring to you is about Peter and the Gentiles. In Acts chapter 10, we find Peter had battling himself going to the Gentiles because the Hebrew were not good or they couldn't associate with the Gentiles. And so Peter was battling and the Lord told him, no, no, don't call what I've created impure. And so Cornelius had to send people. The Lord spoke to him and he sent to go and call Peter to come and speak to these Gentiles. And Peter obeyed and he went. This is what happened in Acts chapter 10 verse 34. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism. God does not show favoritism. But accept from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel. Announcing that. The good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. 43. All the prophets testified about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished their gift of the Holy Spirit had begun poured out on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Shall we stand up? God does not show favoritism. God is God of all. God is God of all nations, all people. He does not show favoritism. Anyone who believes will receive the forgiveness of sin. That's only what God knows and who he is. Is that if you believe, if you come to him, he will receive you. He will receive you. Does not show favoritism. These were the Gentiles. And they received the Holy Spirit. Just as how it happened to the Jews. And they received also the Holy Spirit. If you continue, Peter encouraged them to be baptized. And say, don't stop them. Let them be baptized also. God is God of all. This is what may happen if you obey God's word today. If you obey God's word in your life, people will believe. Your children will believe. Your neighbors will believe in your God. If you obey God's word today, your neighbors will repent. People will turn from evil. And come back to God through your obedience. People will see God's mercy in their life. I don't know what is that God has been telling you today. 
God has been calling you to save. You can share the word of God in many ways. Not only for standing here. You can save by welcoming people. Be kind to people. It's still service. I don't know what is that. But I want us to pray. Let's close our eyes. And just take a few seconds. Just a few seconds. And hear, what is that God is telling you to do? What is that ministry that God is calling you to involve? Is it singing? Is it welcome center? Is it uh, care? Is it uh, uh, kindness? Is it preaching? Is it teaching? Is it going and speak to someone at your house? To your neighbor, your friend? What is that? And it maybe you are here and you need to repent. You need to turn from evil ways. It's your time to ask God. I won't ask you to come in front. No, where you are, just ask. Just pray. Where you are, just pray. Repent. Ask God's forgiveness today. Ask God to forgive you. He wants people to return. He wants people to repent. So take your time and pray. Just pray where you are right now. As I'm praying, and also pray. Just one minute. Lord, thank you for today. We bless your name, O oh God, that you are God who loves us. You are God who wants us to obey. And one of the commandments, the greatest, is that we are to love one another. We are to love our neighbors. We are to love our friends. Help us, Lord. Help us to hear your word and obey. Help us to do what you want us to do. Help us to follow your ways, O oh God. Thank you, Father, that you are great, God. And I praise you, Lord. May you accept our prayers this afternoon. May you accept us, Lord, the way we are. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Give praise to God, Pastor Patrick. Can we give uh, just a round of applause for Brother Nuru for bringing the word for today, please? Thank you, Brother Nuru. What a great word. Amen. Uh, please, you don't have to leave. Stay around. Hug some people. Don't pinch anyone again. If you like, if you're looking for some prayer that's on this afternoon, our chapel will be open. There will be someone in there to pray with you. What an awesome time. Please connect with Nuru if you have any questions. He'd love to talk to you about his message. Thank you guys so much for today. We look forward to seeing you guys next week. Amen.